there, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm reviewing the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room Advanced Trader Tracking 2020 Year to Date Results from January through today, October 6th. It's been quite a year. 798,713. So, this is with a minimum risk of 2,500. Some was a little bit less than that, some were slightly more, but that's about an average of what you would uh, be risking as an advanced trader to see results like this. And you must take the Golden Gap course in order to join the live trading room. That is a prerequisite. Everyone needs to know the class, information, entries, exits, targets, and the rating system before they can join the room because the trades happen and set up fast. So if you're interested in more information and how to get the great results, uh, and you can risk more than 2,500 by the way, or less, you can risk less. You can risk $100 a trade if you want. Email me if you have questions at melissaatthestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And actually, that reminds me, at the beginning when I first, first started out trading, actually when I was developing my system, I was only risking about $150 a trade. It was a good, easy beginner risk that if I lost, I only lost $150, and if I had a good trade, I could make three, four, five hundred dollars $500. So you can use my system with a beginner amount or an advanced trader amount, okay? Earnings season starts next week for the fall, and it's a great time to trade. There's a lot of gaps. What I do is gaps. That is what I focus on. And again, all of your trades should be similar risk, as close as you can get it. This is not an exact science. So your share size will vary from trade to trade. I'm talking about the difference between the entry and the stop, okay, as far as the dollar risk per trade. So if I say, uh, for example, 10 by 50, that's, and that's a short, for example, it'd be 40 cents. If you take 1,000 shares, that's what? A $400 risk, okay? So if you have questions or more questions about this, you can email me as well. So all of these trades were in the, from the live room. Going back January, feels like a long way away, and this was, again, January. Who would have thought what 2020 had to bring? Uh, but it's been a great year, really, to trade the market. If you didn't know what to do this year, you're having a terrible year. Uh, but if you knew what to do in the market this year, you're having a fantastic year, obviously. Uh, January off, then started out the year calm. Two shots for the calm, one loser, break even. Boeing was a winner. Tesla was a loser, first one, and then a big winner. Did Tesla a lot this year. WBA lost, buy one, Q's one. That was earlier in the year. Remember, the market was very bullish. KSS was a win. Foot Locker lost, six lost, and then the second one a win. EXAS is always a nice one. I prefer to do one trade a day. <coughs> if you've ever been in the room for any open houses or trials, you know that. So that was a nice one on the 13th. WFC was a loser. JPM loser. Off the 15th, Apple lost, buy one, Q's one, Apple won. Spy one, Q's one, and the IBM was a loser on the 17th. Close on the 20th. UIL was a winner. No trades on the 22nd. Again, you'll learn in the class, I will not do anything if it doesn't rate per my system. Nothing. Nothing at all. <coughs> so there are days when we may not get any good gaps. <coughs> may not get any good longs or shorts. 23rd DM was a loser. Second one winner. CMCSA was a winner. DFS was a nice winner on the 24th. Win was a rough ride on the 27th. Two losers. Then DFS, small winner, SPY break even, AL loser, SPY was a winner in 27th. Then MMM was break even, winner, PF, PFE two winners. It was a nice one on the 28th. AMD was a winner, once and done, love those. Then to close out January, Facebook was a loser, Microsoft loser, Queen, Queen won, and DD was a big one on the 30th. And the last day of the month, WWE just didn't work, two losers. I called it a retake. And again, I go over that in the class too, <clears throat> in the Golden Gap course. I discuss what you need to be looking for for a retake and whether or not to do it. CVX was a winner. Facebook was a winner too on there. That was January. That was to start off the year. And remember, this is all before COVID. February 3rd, no trades. Again, nothing met the criteria. Fourth, Disney was a loser, Microsoft winner. Fifth, MRK lost. Ford won, Snap won. That was in the fifth. TWLO was a loser, QCOM loser, Microsoft winner. Then February 7th, Goose was a loser, Marvell winner, T2 was a winner. February 10th, Lily lost, T2 won, Twitter, big winner. The 11th, UA lost, second one worked, Qs were a winner, and Lyft on the 12th. That was a good gap. 
13th was NTAP loser, Cisco loser, NTAP another loser. Again, retake there. Didn't set up uh, and follow through with the NTAP. 14th, Yelp lost, Cisco won, EXP lost in both. Then there was a last one there, but overall the EXP did not work right. CAG won on the 18th, SPY won, and Apple on the 19th. 20th, LB lost, 6th loss, Apple lost, SPY lost, BA break even, MS won, 6th loss, Viacom won, AAN won, and STMP won. So you can, you can see here why there's most of the days um, of the best days are do one and done. So 220 was a rough day. The AAN really was the one. Viacom lost then on the 21st too. Uh, it just did not do what it needed to do. Uh, FSLR was a winner and BA was a winner. So sometimes what I'll do is like a continuation gap. I'll look at it to do it on the day. If it doesn't follow through big enough the way I wanted it to, sometimes I'll go after the second day. Or if I do it the first day and it loses, then I'll watch it the next day. So sometimes if I don't get the follow through I want on the one day, it's called a continuation gap. Again, I reviewed that too um, in the trends class where you were looking for something to have a bigger move, which sometimes it does and sometimes it does not. In that case with the Viacom, I remember it, it had a baby move in the 20th and then lost on the 21st. Most of the days when I'm looking to do a gap, I am looking for a big move. I mean, that's ideal. Uh, gaps have a lot of volume. Gaps have a lot of momentum. I'm talking about the gaps that rate high per my system. 224 AL1, solid, boom, out. These are the good days when they're fast and quick. 225 EXAS was a winner. Toll was a winner on the 26th. Toll doesn't move that much, so that was, that was a good uh, for that stock, actually. 227, SPY loss, Q's loss, Microsoft loss, AAL lost. Then it was break even. CCL one, SPY one, Q's one, BA one, and two trades. BA, we did a million times this year. CCL, we did so often this year. This was coming into the thing here right, this was right before COVID too, don't forget. BYND was a nice winner on the 28th. And earnings season was at this beginning part of the year too. Uh, March 2nd, Twitter lost two trades, then the third one worked. Then on March 3rd, CCL lost, Q's lost, CCL had two good ones then late. CCL won in the fourth, BA won in the fifth, Microsoft was a winner in the sixth, SPY lost, BA lost, and a SPY winner. No trades in the ninth, didn't meet the criteria. Tenth was Stitch Fix, lost, BA won. Again, BA we did a million times this year. It was, I think it was, I don't even know if we ever went long at the whole year. I think everyone was a short. Uh, the 11th, SPY lost, SPY won, BA winner. <laughs> it was just, BA is almost in every one here. And the Q's, winner. Off the 12th and 13th, room was closed then. Spy winner. No trades in the 24th, 25th, 26th. Uh, 27th was BA, winner. 30th was CCL, winner. BA was a winner on the 31st. Then April 1st. And again, this is, remember, back with COVID. Beginning of it. Big winner in CCL. And RCL. JPM. The second one lost. BA had one loser. Goldman had one loser and another big winner from BA. I mean, BA is all over here. 4-2, CCL won, BA lost, BA won, BA won, SPY won on the third, and then RIM closed over the April period. CCL was a winner, no trades in the 14th, SPY lost, SPY won, BA winner, MS won on the 16th, BA won on the 16th, again BA, no trades of the 17th, another BA winner on the 20th, CCL lost, UAL lost, and Disney lost. 21st, IBM lost, BA lost, SPY won, Q's won, BA won again on the 21st. And again, this is what I was talking about earlier about continuation too. April 22nd, BA won, Netflix lost in both, UAL won, another airline. Uh, 423, BA lost in two, Walmart won, SPY won, BA small winner. 424, BA lost, Q's lost, BA won. 427, BA won, UPS was a good one on the 28th, and ACAM on the 29th. Then on the 30th, that was, yeah, we're about a month into it now. Twitter lost, Twitter big winner, BA, BA, UPS winner, MCD winner, SPY winner, TDOC winner, another UPS winner, and a Diamonds winner. I mean, sometimes, and again, I go over this too, in the trading room, you have something called a power trend, a power trend, a power trend day. And when you have a power trend day, you can really hit it hard. May 1st, CCO was a winner, SPY was a winner, Q's lost. May 4th, BA won, 
Love one, BA lost, UAL lost, SPY lost, JPM break even, SPY lost. 5-5-W five, five, lost, BA one, AAL one. Those airlines this year. 5-6 was BA one, Matt one. May 7th save lost in both, JPM one, Grub, Grubhub one. 5-8 was AAL lost, BA one, SPY one, CCL one, BA one again. May 11th, BA, <laughs> SPY lost, UAL one. May 12th, no trades. Again, if it doesn't rate 20 points or more per my 26-point rating system, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing anything in it. And it's okay to take a break and take a day off. I mean, it's been an, it's been an active year. May 13th, CCL1, BA1. May 14th, SPY1, BA1. May 15th, JPM lost, SPY lost, JPM1, and SPY1. Two retakes on that. No trades on the 18th. 19th, JPM lost, CCL lost, BA lost, SPY lost. 520 Urban 1, big one. 521 Target 1, BBY 2, one loser and one winner. 522 Room Close, no trades on the 26th. Twitter on the 27th. ANF on the 28th. HPQ 1, that's always a fun stock to trade. 29th Big Loss Twitter 1, no trades on the 1st and 2nd. Diamonds again in the spy on June 3rd. Look at the volatility in the market this year. There was so many good trades in the market. I don't know if I've ever done the market as much as I have except for this year. I mean, you know, but it's been that kind of ride. Today's a good example of that. June 4th, no trades. Work was a winner. 6-8, no trades. 6-9, AL lost, and the second one worked. BA worked. Uh, GES on the 10, Starbucks. That's always a fun one to trade. June 11th, Diamonds won, SPY won, BA won. No trades on the 12th. June 15th, SPY lost in two. June 16th, WW1, CCL1. June 18th, SPY lost, BA lost, SPY1, and then the BA1 again. Off the 19th, 22nd, BA lost, CCL lost, CCL1, and BA1. There was two retakes from that day. Apple won on the 23rd. 24th was BA again and CCL again. Did that a lot this year. June 25th, BYND lost, AAL lost, and BA1. June 22nd, Nike won. June 29th, no trades. June 30th, BA won, Mu won. July, gosh, it seems far away, but here it is. July 1st, FDX won, BA won, BA won again. Then the room was closed for the holiday. Apple won on the 13th. Spy lost on the 14th and won. Second retake work, C worked, and WFC lost. Goldman was a loser on the 15th. BAC lost. CCL won, Qs won. On the 16th, July 17th, Netflix won. No trades on the 20th. July 21st, Urban lost. KO lost. Netflix won and won twice. Snap was a nice winner on the 22nd. Then lost to the 23rd. Microsoft lost on the 23rd. Netflix big one on the 23rd. INTC won on the 24th and BA won on the 27th. And again, this was earnings season two. July 28th, HOG won. MCD won. The other one didn't work. And then another winner, MCD eBay won on the 29th. July 30th, BA lost, BA won. SPY lost, SPY break even. eBay lost, Q's lost, two in the Q's lost, and a small winner in BA. Then on July 31st, Facebook won. Apple, big winner, big one. August 3rd, Snap won. August 4th, SPCE lost, Apple won. And then Disney was a good one on the 5th. August 6th, WDC won. August 7th, Babel won. We haven't done that in a while. August 10th, no trades. August 11th, Q's lost, Microsoft lost. Big winner of Microsoft then. That tanked today, actually, too. August 12th, no trades. August 13th, Cisco. August 14th, Baidu. August 17th, no trades. August 18th, KSS was a winner. August 19th, Target was a loser. Target was a winner. Another winner in Target. August 20th, Battle lost, and, and then BA lost, too. BA won on the 21st, no trades on the 24th. PLCE won on the 25th, no trades on the 26th, off on the 27th, and then no trades on the 31st. This was the beginning of September then. September was a bearish month. BA lost twice on the 1st, Facebook lost, Walmart won. Second, Facebook lost twice, then a big one, then another big one on the SPY. This is September 2nd. CN won on the 3rd, room closed on the 4th. Then September 8th, SPY lost in two, BA won. Tip one of the ninth, BA one, and uh, that sh that's Lulu. Should be Lulu on the uh, September 9th there. And then nine, 10, no trades. Nine eleven was Apple. Nine fourteen, no trades. Nine fifteen, CCL. 
916 Apple won, 917 BA lost, Q's lost, Goldman lost, Apple lost, Facebook lost, Q's lost, Apple won and Facebook won. That was a wild day. And so again, you know, the best days are one ticker symbol and, you know, a couple thousand dollars, really. 918 off. After a day when you don't have a good day, it's always good to take a day off. Then back on the 21st, hit it beautifully. Huge one in the SPY, huge one in the diamonds, solid trade in the Qs, all winners back that week. 22nd, no trades, big one in the Qs. September 23rd, 19 to 50, beautiful. I mean, I just, I've just been reading this market so well, like even today. September 24th, SPY loss, BA1. 25th, SPY loss, uh, JPM loss, Goldman loss, JPM break even. No trades on the 28th, diamonds huge. 30th was mute, works. No trades on October 1st. Spy was a break even on the second. Nothing on the fifth. I was off on TV and a beautiful, beautiful short today in Apple. And actually, I called that before the market tanked. I called that very early today. And then it really, really tanked. And that was a fabulous read on Apple and, a, and really a fabulous call. So what is an advanced trader risk? Again, it's an average of about $2,500. You can risk a small amount. You can, okay? These are all equity trades. Equity trades called in the live trading room. So you must have a brokerage account to be able to take these trades. Um, and some are long, some are shorts, okay? And you can contact a broker on your own. I'm not a broker. To find out more information, you have to have charts. And you have to do the class, okay, in order to get these trades and be in the room. Do you have to risk $2,500 a trade? No, you don't. Can you trade with a beginner risk? Yes, yes you can. You could take a small account, a prop account, and build it up, build it up from there. No one said you have to risk $2,500 a trade. I've been doing this since 2008. It's almost 2021, it's 2020. So for 12 years I've been doing this. So you see, and actually I could be risking even more, but I think once you get to a very, very comfortable uh, risk amount, sometimes you just want to just be in that comfort zone. I'm so focused and, and, and on my read, like even the way I read this market today. Uh, you know, when you get to a point where you're so comfortable, you can do really well. You can hold the conviction. You can let trades ride out. And again, every time I'm always using a stop, it's a limit order stop. And I talk more about that in the class. You have to have a fixed risk in trades, even when you're doing the day trades. So just to talk here a little bit about, you know, what different types of accounts. There's retail trading accounts, there's prop accounts. So for example, if you have a $40 stock price and have 2,000 shares, you need 8,000 in buying power because you're taking the trade on margin, okay, whether you're going long or short as an equity trade, okay? You can open up a prop account if you want. So for, for that example, okay, if you had a $2,500 proprietary day trading account, you'd have 10 to 1 margin. You have 25,000 in margin, so you'd need 8,000 in buying power. You'd be able to take a trade like that with 200 shares at a $40 price, okay? If the stock moves a dollar in your direction, again, using the same example, with 200 shares, you can make $200. $200 a day equals $1,000 a week, and most people are not making that trading. Most people are losing because they don't know what they're doing. One of the reasons that I've... I've uh, developed successful traders who are with me in the room and on the Gap Options newsletter is they've done all the classes, they're on the options letter, they're in the trading room, and they're listening to the things I'm saying and learning every day and getting better. You can day trade with a beginner account and the risk, the only difference is your share size really is smaller. So you, I just want people to understand you can trade whatever risk makes sense for your size of your account. It's what you can afford and we're always using the limit order stops. You can grow a small account into a larger account. It's about the idea of working for yourself. And not only that, financial freedom. And the sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. This has been an incredibly active year. Not just for day trades options. I mean, incredibly active. I, you know, just was here. The market gave it. The year's not up yet. We got three more months to go. And I've been on fire, on fire. Particularly with my read of the market, which has been absolutely incredible. I mean, I had so many nice emails from people today because of the way that I read this market and people were in, were in shorts. So if you want to learn my strategy, the Golden Gap course is a class that I do where I teach it. It's a two-day course on Saturdays and Sundays. I usually teach it once a month. Some months I, I, I may not if I'm super busy with something, but uh, the next class is in October 
And if you want to sign up, it's a good time to join because it's earning season and it's an active time to train. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. The class tuition is $69.99. Everyone pays the same. You must do the class in order to join the live training room. The class is online. If you want to sign up, you can email me for the forms. You can put it on multiple credit cards if you need to do that. Uh, people have emailed me, you know, the most important thing is understanding what to do before you trade. You should never risk one dollar in the market before you know what to do. Having that information, which is invaluable, will really help you make money in the end. And one of the reasons, again, I'm just going to go back to the market that I call this market so, so well, even today, is because of the, my knowledge and the information that I have in my gap reading abilities to predict price action, to be able to tell that the market of these stocks that I called would sell off. I know that because of the gap 